What's going on guys, Jimo here again with another great video and today I do not have the honor of spraying this blue Nissan Twin. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but rather I get the privilege of doing this old rusty green Honda which is just, you know, a diamond in the rough around here. And it's just, it's a piece of art in itself really. And uh, as you can see we've replaced the fender and an aftermarket part, they dent it for you. You don't have to pay extra for that and you get to fix it for free. So it kind of works out for everybody. And I've just replaced the filters on uh, my cross draft booth where I'm going to be spraying this. Uh, they're pretty clogged. The booth is not working well at all. And it's made a significant difference in uh, the airflow and just spraying in here in general, keeping the jobs clean. My exhaust filters I'd like to change, but they've been on back order for months, it seems. So hopefully they'll be coming in soon. But here comes my Honda, so let's get at her. So the first thing I'm going to be applying on this is a ground coat. I've sprayed uh, similar colors like this, the greens and blues in uh, BASF paint in particular, I find. Um, even though the metallic ones generally cover a little bit better, uh, in this case it's, it's not so much, just kind of the spraying history from what I recall of this color. So I'm going to use a ground coat to sort of uh, help with coverage and kind of even things out. If it was a nicer car, I'd probably use a sealer instead and that would kind of give a bit better foundation for the paint but you know when it comes to a car like this uh, you don't tend to spring for the extras now more often than not with my BASF system it will it will tell me when a color is transparent and it will give me an option for a ground coat so they'll give you the best ground coat they can use to minimize the amount of paint that you go through and uh, it doesn't always do that though so it kind of just comes with experience this color in particular it did not. It's an older color, which they've probably kind of forgotten a little bit about uh, with their waterborne line. So, um, you know, just coming with experience, you use a ground coat that's of similar value to the color you're spraying. So in this video, I kind of want to take you guys outside the booth and show you what's happening elsewhere in the shop. So here's my brother trying uh, his luck at a uh, used door that we received. I'll show you the job in a little bit, but whenever they send a used door, the window's up and you have to jump the motor to lower the window. So let's have a look and see how he does. Oh, this thing's the corn cut. This thing's no good? Well, I haven't, I wasn't looking. So things aren't going so well for him. Let's check on Chris in the downdraft booth. And he's usually the guy spraying in the downdraft booth throughout the week while I'm in the cross draft. So uh, I've worked with Chris for many years now. His work is phenomenal. Uh, very fussy, can be irritating at times, but for the most part, it's uh, only to make the job turn out flawlessly in the end. Just uh, part of being a painter, I guess. So um, you can see he's got a bumper here to deal with as well. Almost every car has one bumper smashed up, at least when it comes in here. And he likes to spray with the Techna gun, which I've heard nothing but really uh, good things about. Uh, he seems to really like it. And I know he's excited for the DuPont line that's coming in soon. So I'll keep you updated on how we're making it with that. And uh, here's some other jobs that he's actually sprayed today. Uh, this Chrysler 300, I believe the paint code is PWG. You can see it matched really well. And uh, he gets a great finish. And uh, just looks good. So he's currently clearing with a Develbus GTI, and he did mention today though that he's hoping to upgrade to a Technogun pretty soon. And here's another job he did, um, a Lexus rear cover, and there's a windshield or a surround that went with it. It was rusted out a bit, so it's prepped and uh, painted. Did a good job. Looks good. So here I am back at my beautiful Honda after my ground coat, ready to put on my first coat of RM Onyx Waterborne paint. And what happens a lot of times in body shops is little moldings like the one you see on the hood there. Uh, they get forgotten inside the, the vehicle or misplaced and you know you go to paint the job and you're like okay is there a molding that goes with this fender? Does it need painting? What's going on? And they're like oh we forgot about the molding. So you know this that happened in this case. The prepper had uh, grabbed it out of the car after right when I had it ready for paint. Did a little quickie on it and uh, Luckily, it didn't work out too bad, so we get to paint it all at once. It's just kind of a pain having to paint it separately after the fact, but, uh, you know, those things happen. And when it comes to spraying grills on bumpers, this one's pretty bad. There's some that are worse, uh, some that are better, but um, spraying a transparent color is twice as bad. It's hard to get the material on wet and covered well, so you really want to check these little gaps here to make sure you get full coverage. So here's a Toyota bumper that I sprayed yesterday originally 
and then I had to respray it today because it did not match the first color that I used. It was a little bit too orange. It goes with this Toyota here. They put it on at the end of the day. I don't have any footage of it actually on, but the second time around we got it, it matched, and everybody's happy. And here's some Toyota bumpers that I also sprayed. They've been sitting around getting covered in dust. Uh, the truck's on the rack. We have a bit more work to do to it yet. Mm. Window jumping, take two. So let's see if he's going to get it here or not. He is actually a licensed electrician by trade. Um, so, I mean, you know, how this economy is, you got people working in uh, places they don't really belong. So, I mean, you gave him like 243, whatever, 10,000 volts. No problem. You give him a 12 volt door and uh, it's going to throw him for a loop because uh, I don't think they cover this in electrical school. So, uh, looks like another fail. Let's move on. So it looks like things are going pretty well over here for Chris. He's just checking things over with the sun gun, make sure he's got full coverage and a nice even transition for a blend, which it looks like he does, and he's ready for clear. And a quick tip with this molding, you can see that it's positioned the same way as if we're on the vehicle on the top edge is actually raised so I can have better access to get paint up there. So if any edge is going to get neglected, it's going to be the bottom edge, but hopefully neither edge gets neglected. But, you know, little tips like that can go a long way. And we're slowly chipping away at this TR6. Um, you know, December tends to either boom if we get hit with a lot of snow or it can be a slow month. So we might get a bit more accomplished on it. we got the floor cut out there, new and ready to weld in. Uh, restoration in a collision shop tends to take a bit longer, quite a bit longer. So here's the final coat going on. Um, Going to blend it out. You really blend it out, you know, as you go. This color here, it's a you know, dark transparent green. It's going to blend out like a dream. You don't really have to do anything, and uh, yeah, so here's what it looks like after it's flashed off. You got a nice even matte look, consistent blend, everything kind of looks consistent, the same. And I have this patented maneuver I've been working on, actually. It's uh, it's pretty nice. I call it the rust blend, and uh, it just goes from you know normal paint to a rusty surface, and I think it looks nice. So let's see how my electrical specialist is making out with window uh, jumping this door here in the window. So we decided that the battery charger is maybe a bit overkill, moved on to something a little bit more subtle, maybe suited for this kind of a job. So, you know, let's see how he does. We decided the battery charger is overkill. Does it So let's maybe check back and see if he ever gets that window down. In the meantime, I'll show you the van that it's going on, this Montana van. And uh, I tried to polish those dents out, but in the end, they were just a little bit too big. So I thought, you know, let's just throw a few doors on this and be done with it. So that's kind of where we're at with this job. So moving back to the Honda, here's the clear I'm going to be using on it. It's from BASF. It's called Limco, and it's their bottom of the barrel economy clear. It's very inexpensive, but it's uh, actually an all-around a nice clear. Um, it's It comes with no warranty from BASF, so your shop kind of eats the cost if anything goes wrong. But having said that, I've never ever experienced any problems with it. And you'll probably notice that I mixed up a pretty generous amount of material. I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get to the grill. But basically, you need, you need the material once you get there because... Uh, it's kind of tough to transfer it on efficiently when it comes to spraying all those little offsets. So as I've talked about in many of my other videos, I usually use about 50% overlap. And one thing I don't think I've mentioned before is uh, talking about tech sheets. I, I know I've discussed them many times in the forum, but whenever you're using a product you're unfamiliar with, uh, clears, primers, base coat, anything, uh, if you go to the manufacturer's website, you can get a tech sheet or TDS and that's going to give you all the information you need to know about that product. So it's going to give you flash times, equipment recommendations, and help you avoid potential problems. So, you know, the clear may specify that you want they want you to use a 1.2. So if you have a 1.4 tip on there, you're putting on way too much material. You're probably going to run the hell out of the clear. So it's always worth having a glance at your technical data sheet before you start using any product you've never used. So here's a job I thought I'd show you that just came in. This is a Dodge Dart, a brand new, um, brand new vehicle. has less than 2,000 kilometers on it, I believe I heard them say. And, you know, I thought I'd just give you a visual on this. And I also want to show you something that I talked about in a few other videos on the color match on these new cars. And you can see why color matching can be such a nightmare. So this is what they're coming off as the lot, uh, coming off looking like from the lot. And 
you can see that the, the bumper clearly does not match the hood or the fenders. You know, the plastics are painted in a separate factory, and uh, you know this is kind of the result. And it seems like uh, what the, uh, what society has kind of accepted as the norm for these vehicles, except when it comes to a body shop, it seems. So here's the second coat of clear now going on after about five to ten minutes of flash, which is based, of course, on temperature and humidity and the product you're using, which if you check your tech sheet, you would know this already. But you may notice I have extended this video a little bit longer than I typically do. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm struggling for time to kind of get all of these thoughts uh, onto the microphone. So hopefully you guys are getting a little bit more out of this video. But, you know, I love getting your feedback on this sort of thing. So feel free to leave me a comment or inbox me. And let me know what you think of a format like this. And here is the grill I was talking about, which, you know, can be kind of a nightmare to spray clear on as well. You kind of have to find that fine line between getting the product to flow out nice and not going on too wet that, you know, it's going to run all the way down, which I've done, I think, uh, you know, quite a few times so far uh, my painting career. I'm sure many people have. Um, one thing that didn't really cross my mind, that's a new bumper stand. I'm not used to being able to actually go in behind and spray it. If I had done that, I think I would have saved myself a lot of aggravation here, but uh, I didn't think that far ahead. And like I said, the new stand, yeah, I'm not quite, um, you know, not quite aware of my options, I guess you'd say. But uh, usually I kind of dust it on like I'm doing, start one way, go the other, try and do the top, try and do the bottom, and then do the rest of the bumper. So here is the end result of our Honda coming up. And I find typically when you get uh, a job like this with a lot of damage still kind of around the vehicle, the customers usually request, they say, you know, why you have paint in the gun? Do you mind uh, Do you mind just touching this spot up like it's no big deal? It's kind of a, you know, a body shop circulating joke. So, you know, if that's you, stop it. Don't be that guy. So, yeah, it turned out pretty well. I think everybody should be happy once we get this thing back together. So let's have one last look here in Chris's booth, see how, uh, how things are looking. He's got this beast uh, cleared, it's uh, currently baking, and uh, I'd say she looks not too shabby. You can see he's no stranger to a paint gun. And I know he always watches all my videos, so I should probably give him a little shout out and just kind of let him know that I'm going to be calling in sick when that TR6 is ready for paint. Just saying. Here's something I've always wanted to do. I could probably do a separate video on it altogether, but that is connect with some of my biggest fans. So let's have a look at this comment here. So in reference to my Xbox 360 custom controller, they write, bet the paint job looks like shit now and the buttons probably never worked correctly again. Now, as much as I wish that were true, because then I could retire from Call of Duty and I'd probably be a lot more productive, but unfortunately, the buttons are still working quite well, a little too well, better than ever, you might say. So, you know, just let me know how much money you want to lose, and um, we'll go from there. And just to clarify, this is all in good humor. I really don't mind getting any negative feedback, so, um, you know, keep it coming. And here is the moment you've all been waiting for to see if our electrician working in the body shop can get this window to go down. And I've slowed it down for dramatic effect. I was actually kind of hoping the motor blew up, but uh, hey, that works. And before I let you guys go, I wanted to show you this next job I'm going to be working on. Hopefully I have some video out soon. But in the meantime, I'd like to hear some of your thoughts. It's um, going to be a gift for my little guy. Uh, I'm going to be giving it a custom paint job. I'm thinking of pearl white. i got some Cadillac decals to really pimp this beast out. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Give me some ideas. And uh, we'll go from there. So... That's it for this time, guys. Thanks for watching. Later.